Now, if you're just tuning in, we're asking what the future of Nigeria will look like, you know, with all this conversation about weak leaders and creating hard times. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wish you Africa one with the hashtag Wish Show. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 And also, our phone lines are open now, so you can also call in to the show. To, let's hear what you have to say. All right, so when you're calling, please make sure your volume of your television set is really, really down. And also that um, you just quickly say what you have to say in a minute. All right, so Lami, before we went on a break, right, I was saying that the system is already infested with a lot of weak leaders. And, you know, when I say a leader is weak, it's not for, say, the, the literal meaning of weakness. It is the fact that you're not courageous enough to take a decision that is greater than you. Who did they put themselves there in the first place? Hey, wait, let me finish. You see, all the leaders that we have right now, the crop of people that we have right now, is they are only thinking about self, my family, myself, my this, my that. And that's why most of them, when they pass, the children, I mean, even the, the wealth, the generation, the, it doesn't transcend because those ones do not even, they don't know how you struggle to get it. Even if you, you got it by hook Ooh. and by crook, Ooh. you know. But I'm just saying to you Part that. Of the problem so now that we no, have, our problem is leadership and followership yes even in your own community if you go on and become a state governor and you don't do anything mm -hmm. in your state you don't you don't have any bias towards your state they won't welcome you when you finish <laughs> they will tell you when after all when he was governor for four years what did he do for us mm. spirit of entitlement so the problem we have in nigeria is enormous I don't know where. I don't have a solution. I no. only said the problem. Yeah. I don't have a solution. <laughs> no, so what would the future look like? That's now, my point. thank you. I want us to steer it back mm. to the conversation of the children of yes. nowadays. That is my particular interest. A lot of children these days are not resilient. We don't teach them resilience. We don't teach them the fact that it is good to succeed. And at the same time, you can also fail. Mm. Failure is the Part natural of process life, yes. of life. We don't let children make their decisions. We are so overprotective. I see children in schools that cannot even carry their hand, their school bags. When my daughter closes, for, carry your school bag. Carry it and go into the car. You carry their school bags for them, even their homeworks. Mm. Let me tell you something. If a teacher sends me a home, any homework and my child doesn't have capacity to do that homework, she would not do it. I won't help her. I will just put a note like, I'm sorry, Mrs. Lagbada, she could not do it. I'm not going to help her. It means that they have not done the job. Mm. I'm not going to aid her just to make her look like, oh, she passed. It means that she doesn't have capacity to do it. Mm. My first daughter was going to go into a particular school in England, and a very, very competitive school. And I, I really wished for her to go to that school. But trust me, she passed the first um, stage. At the second, and I was really mount. I mounted a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I was telling her it's okay if they don't admit it's fine. Mm. The day she was going to call me, she got she did the second interview. She did the interview, and they wrote her a letter. Unfortunately, she did not make it. Mm -hmm. I said thankfully. So next, she said. She said, "Is that all you're going to say?" I said, "Ah, what do you expect <laughs> me to say? Every child cannot get into that school." Mm. Yes, I would have been very proud if you had gotten into that school. But you don't, clearly you can't get into the school. There are other options. So what are the other options? And we moved on from it. And she felt so good. She said she was so scared. She thought that I said, why? Ah, did I get into Cambridge? <laughs> I didn't get into Cambridge now. Academic success is not the only, the only yardstick for success in life. Mm. You can always thrive in some other areas. If you don't go to that school, you can also go to another school. Mm. So we don't, everybody's talking about, you must do this, you must do We don't So we children. get to that point, even when yeah. the child does not qualify for certain things, we keep pushing, we pushing and we try to them. aid them yeah. to We don't get allow it. them to make their mistakes. Okay, so we don't allow them to make decisions. Mm. We are pampering them. And a lot of children are growing up too fast. Mm. They are missing out. In the, on their childhood. Mm. If you go to um, social media, there's a particular child I've been looking at. Oh, I know I have very, very strong bias for family law. So anything that involves domestic issues, children, I'm always very involved. If I, if I had the power, I would have called the social services on the mother of that child mm. because the exposure is too much. She's, the mother is not giving the child the 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 opportunity to choose if that child wants to become a celebrity in future or not. Mm. A three-year-old, you need to on the child is always dancing 
to Mali, uh, what's it called there, Naira Mali, <laughs> and all that poses as well, a, like an adult, mm. you know, and I'm like, give this child an opportunity, the child is so this is the times that we're at now, what? a time where it, it seems like, you know, for me to be able to project the what child I'm doing, might grow I have to be on social future, media. Child be able to, to continue that lifestyle mm. and break down, you see them uh, committing suicide all mm. around. There's no tenacity things. because you didn't build it when the child was growing up. Mm. Let, when a child is a child, let the child enjoy their childhood. Mm. Why are we so in a hurry? You see a 14-year-old already doing makeup. Hey, if you see the, uh, what's it called? Um, what did they do? Now me, now you're a taking picture. a conversation to the <laughs> No, now nah, it's part of what I no, know. We it are is. talking about the future of tomorrow. Yes. And these are the problems we are going to so confront you are, in future. Yes, I, I hear you. So you are saying that we're raising our we're raising children that will not be strong enough for because what will come for them are, nobody in knows. the future. No parent knows when they are leaving. Mm. In as much as I pray for long life, I don't know when I, I will leave. Are we building children that can survive on their own? Mm. Let me come to Uti. Uti. Yeah. I'm trying to find a solution yeah. here. What do you think the way forward would be? Ha, huh. that's a loaded question. Um, way forward where? For the young people, for the government? Because, <sighs> I mean, let's come back to if we're really going to make changes in Nigeria. And here's the thing, right? Nigerians, were like, we're, in, we're like a goldfish swimming in a bowl. So few of us can make it round the bowl once and carry the memories with us. So after everything happened in October and there was all the drive and all the fire, people were coming together, talking about the constitution, whether we should change the constitution. And how many months down the line? It's like everybody has forgotten, everybody has moved on. So for me, you know, when we talk about leadership, when we, you know, Lamy's talking about the children, yes, those changes are cultural. The way we're raising our children, the way we're ensuring, it's not new. Our parents did it. You know, we didn't walk the 20 kilometers, five kilometers, 10 kilometers. They you didn't did. have cars, yeah. you know, may or I they, you know, they weren't as many cars as they were. Yeah, I walked too. <laughs> so, yeah, well. I so went you to Body Now, you, you, you walked the school. That's not, that's not trekking. You grew up in the time when cars were the norm, you know? So with every generation, I've said this before, we get physically, you know, weaker. So this is because the conveniences are getting more, you know, and that and that. So I'm not even gonna to talk too much about the, the children. For me, it's like, you know, where are we going as a country? Because Nigerians, I keep saying it, we, you know, it's like the spirit of God, where we are, two are gathered, we are present. When Nigerians are gathered, all we do is talk about Nigeria and nobody has a sustainable solution. The fact is, the government, the people, we the people are the government. The government didn't drop from the sky. What do we all value? What do we all put as, what, where, where, what is our beacon? What is it? I, I asked the question the last time. Mm -hmm. We are looking for the easiest path to success. Now, some may argue that it's our leaders and what we've seen that have gotten us to this point. But on the side of politics, on the side of government, I agree. If people think that I just need to wait until it cycles round, we're doing it again for 2023. They're saying it should move to the Southeast. Who should it be? And all of that. It's never going to be based on meritocracy. And if it's not based on meritocracy, then why do I need to work hard? Why do I need to excel? All I need to do is wait till it's my turn. What do I need to make sure that when the turn is coming round, it hits me? That's okay. never going to give us the best. So let me paint a picture. Hmm? Um, in Dubai, where this story came from that we're talking about, they saw themselves move from desert to technology to whatever. Now they are like a first world country where the whole world, everybody wants to visit Dubai and they're doing well. And their worry right now is because the young generation or the future generation did not see the struggle where they were coming from, right? They are worried about what they would do. I hope they do not ruin everything that the hard work and they have put in place to ensure that that place is a destination for the world. You know, everybody around the world wants to come to Dubai. That's one, right? In Nigeria, our own is the other way around. <laughs> Let me don't laugh. We have, we have seen, I mean, I mean, my mom, 
used to tell me when she was in the polytechnic, they used to come and iron their clothes for them. They used to do so many things for them, right? We have, we have been going um, backwards, right? We've been going backwards. And that's why for me, when I, when I saw this um, um, statement, I was looking at it, but when I tried to put it alongside Nigeria, and I'm wondering, okay, if this is our current reality, where it seems like everything that we're doing, we're going 10 steps backward, 10 years backward, everything seems to be retrogressing, you know, what exactly would our children or our great-grandchildren be talking about? Is there some form of hope that maybe they might go back to the circle of, since these ones are going back to the circle of Camel, we, we might be going back to the circle of, uh, what's it called, values, and the circle where it seems like integrity stands, a circle where it seems like honesty is, you know, do you think that we are, we are almost there, where everybody is now tired of this corruption, or you see that it's going to continue and it's going to linger? I, I need you, you to give me some more You hope. know, my own answer is that um, in another generation, in the next generation, there are going to be two sets of Nigerian children. Mm -hmm. And their realities are going to be different. The ones who were born abroad and the w ones who were born here. They are going to be two different. You know how many children are born abroad every year? Mm -hmm. So for that, it means that there's a likelihood that every of those children are, is going to migrate abroad. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be left with the children that were born here. Mm. So I don't know what will happen at that time. Wow. All right, so let me take a comment. Uti, let me hear your comments with you. Yeah, so um, I think has sent us a comment and he says, good evening, ladies. Nigeria has been divided to ethnic groups. The power stays within a particular region. The president has been sluggish from his military era to na till now. How would the president reappoint ex-servicemen by giving them a political post using a slogan called non carers ambassador? This just happened today. This country is about me, myself, and family. Lord, Lord have mercy on our nation. Thank mm. you for that comment, Ali. Sad. Very sad. But that's the truth. I keep saying it. Our only measure is money. All we know is money. It's the only consideration. It's the only beacon we follow. It doesn't matter how old you are. From from two, one, three to a hundred, everybody puts money above everything else. Hundred million naira. Only consequence. Kill a man. People will be dropping like flies. Hmm. And that's the problem. Hmm. All right. So solid blocks for <coughs> erecting strong buildings are molded from the home. That's power of no, the power of delayed gratification, power of can I work and earn it, power of bigger vision. What sense of purpose do the parents truly um, possess to bequeath? Right? That's, you know that's what I've been saying. There's a whole lot. The children of nowadays, yeah. what are we as parents bequeathing to them that yeah. will take them through the next generation? Absolutely. Because the future now is accelerated. Absolutely. Let me take a call quickly, Lami. Right. Let me, sorry to cut you. Um, Kinsley, are you there? Thank you for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Kinsley from Benin, are you there? I think it's, it's, it's not there. Go ahead. So I'm saying that the future is accelerated, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Everything is fast. Content is available to children and all that. So there's a, there's a lot the parents have to do now, and that is building resilience in your children. Mm. When you build it, it will take them through life because you wouldn't know where exactly life would take them. Mm. And we also need to inculcate adaptability into yeah, children. Absolutely. But they have to be fluid. Mm. Children need to be able to adapt. Some children cannot adapt to any other situation only except for yeah. the ones they have at the moment. Okay. I think so, we still have Kinsley again. Sorry, okay. Lami. Kinsley, are you there again now? Thank you for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Oh, sugar. I think it's, the, the line is having troubles. And yeah. we need to also ensure that children are risk takers. Mm. They must make mistakes. Let them learn from their failures. Let them collaborate with other people. But you think these people. things are not already happening. But it's just that it's happening. Um, they're not, they not being guided by the right values to take all these things. I mean, this risk taking your thing. Because yes, children are nowadays values. are taking risks. They are doing all of these things. No, but they are just own generation. channeled I in mean, the wrong direction. I'm talking about the children. Uh, all the 18-year-olds that are going naked on... Is that not taking a big ah, no, risk? No, 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 we are not in that No, light. but it's... I mean, Uti, help not me out. Not in that light. 
It's, not taking, kind of it's taking a big risk. risk. Yeah. Because you don't even know what the future is like for you. You are taking a big risk because you do not know. But they are willing to take that, that I challenge. I don't know that that's risk-taking. I think that's just stupidity. I'm sorry. I don't think that's the risk-taking that Thank is referring you. to. <laughs> that one just, look, it doesn't... It, again, values, culture is shifting. It's eroded. It doesn't take a lot eroded. to take a close off these days. Um, it's what it is. So I don't know that that's what we mean by taking risk. I think if they thought about it from a risk-taking point of view, Maybe less of them would do it. Okay. I think that just demonstrates the absolute loss of thought. All right. So right. Mukaila from a, or your state, I think, is is on the line. Thank you for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Yes. Hi. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Good day. How are you? Yes. Go ahead. Let's hear what Hello? you have to say. Let's hear what you have to say. Hello. We can hear you. We have okay. To, we have to work on all this um, calling. Hello. Segment. Go ahead. We can hear you if you I'll, can hear me. Let, how are you? Hello. Oh, do you have to cut him off? You have to cut him off because he's not. He's not. He's listening to himself. Yeah. Yeah. So you're hear. saying. In addition to what uh, Uti just said, I think everything is now in the reverse. We Nigerians. We like the culture of the West, the Western culture. Hmm. The influence is greatly, greatly um, overwhelming our own culture. You see, parents of nowadays tell you categorically, I don't want my children to learn my language. Please hmm. don't speak it to them. I really don't understand. And I tell them that you are doing a disservice to that child. Hmm. How can I? That's their identity. Language and dressing is part of your identity. Mm -hmm. Now, but even the Western culture, the Westerners, they are complaining. You know? They are even now studying the Asians. You know the Asians, a lot of them are tiger moms. Yes. They are building on their own culture. But we are migrating from our own culture to the West. Somebody else is That has not even worked for them. Absolutely. Even they are already confused. They are already even doing research and all that into other cultures to come and help their own culture. Mm. Okay, so let's go back to in like one minute because we are actually run out of time. Okay. To me from Lagos, I think we have for me. Hello. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say, please. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right. Now, uh, based on what you are saying, see, about Nigeria, please, I want to hear my view. You see, the issue with this country has to do with so many things. We have so many issues in this country. I listened to what happened yesterday when a barber in Akano State was arrested by Sharia court and he was being tried. This is purely a misplaced priority. What has that got to do with what we are facing in this country? What? I mean, it's no nonsense. We should face you know, the issues in this country. I mean, there will be solutions. Not a barber. Come on, barber. Barber is here to make a living. He's been arrested. It's, it's, it's annoying. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so quickly, because we've run out of time. Um, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times, right? Good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. So we can all agree that we are, we are in hard times right now in Nigeria, currently facing hard times in Nigeria. So how can we create strong men that would create good times for us? You have said a lot of things about start from the, start from the foundation, starting from the children and all of that. Building that resilience, building the culture of delayed gratification, learning how to say no. How about Uti? If we want to do ground up, I'll be mean up ground. Um, Lami has come from bottom up. If we want to do from top bottom, what do you think we can do? Is there anything that we can do from top bottom to, to create weak, um, strong leaders? So to create strong leaders, I think the leaders of today are gone. We can forget those guys. But the leaders of tomorrow, which I believe is why Lamy is so focused on the children, mm. is where we need to now focus. We need to teach ethics. We need to teach the value of hard work. Mm -hmm. We need to start to show, even in these tough times, we are making a fantastic crop of young people because sometimes it feels like we only talk about the negative. Uti, we have a lot second. of young people doing amazing things. 
who are resilient, who mm -hmm. are taking technology and digital to new heights. Yeah. That's the narrative we need to start telling. We need to start showing our young people the value of hard work. Mm -hmm. How do I get people to come away? You know, we almost need to do a 180 away from money, mm. back to what really matters, Absolutely. back to what is sustainable. Mm -hmm. The fact that there is, there is an actual reward for hard work, not instant money. And we have a lot of those young people who are out there who are building businesses, who are doing great things. Absolutely. That's the narrative we need to sell in our schools. Those are the role models we need to push for our children. Okay. Our values are out of out of out so of. So we place, need to go take it back to, to values. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, ladies. We really ran out of time. Thank you, Lami. Thank you, Isi. Um, Uti. <laughs> now, if um, in case you missed today's quote. Here it is again. I think I've said that quote a million and one time. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. We'll see you live tomorrow as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy your evening.